Knock, knock. Who's there? It's me, Jesus. Let me in. Can't do that, bro. You don't exist. Hi. Today we're going to talk about, did Jesus exist? I've heard from other atheists, and when I was an atheist, I used to also believe that, that Jesus didn't exist, that we don't have good evidence for thinking that he did, and that historians largely don't believe that he existed. I knew all of this without ever actually having read a history book on Jesus. It wasn't until I got challenged and asked to back up my claims that I did start hitting the history textbooks. And uncomfortably, I started to find that historians didn't agree with me, um, that they did in large part think that Jesus existed and that the majority of scholars didn't find any reason to doubt his existence. In fact, here's Mark Herman to explain. I know in the, in the crowds you all run around with, it's commonly thought that Jesus did not exist. Let me tell you, once you get outside of your conclave, there's nobody who, I mean, this is not even an issue for scholars of antiquity. It is not an issue for scholars. of There is no scholar in any college or university in the Western world who teaches classics, ancient history, New Testament, early Christianity, any related field who doubts that Jesus existed. Now, one of the arguments about why historians say Jesus existed is that all of them are religious and teaching at religious institutions. Therefore, if they disputed the evidence that Jesus existed, they'd be out of a job. But that's not the case with Bart Ehrman. Ehrman is a religious critic, New Testament scholar, has a Masters in Divinity, PhD, wrote countless books, five of which are bestsellers. And he's very critical of religion and of religious beliefs. Uh, he himself used to be a Christian, became agnostic or atheist. I don't know precisely what you would call his own, but he's no longer a Christian and has good reason to argue and dispute some of the, uh, the doctrines of Christianity and the traditions of the, the religion. So Ehrman is in no means somebody who would uh, have Christianity's back. So it's interesting when he kind of makes those claims. Ehrman's not the only person uh, who backs Christianity or backs the, the evidence for historical Jesus. We have numerous atheist uh, historians who also make that case, from people like Marcus Casey and Michael Grant and, and many others. So I really would encourage, if you're somebody who does dispute the evidence for historical Jesus, to really go out and, and read some of these texts to find out what they actually say. That isn't to say there is no dispute about the historical Jesus. There is a, a theory put forward known as the Jesus myth or Jesus mythicism, which argues Jesus never actually existed and it's sort of an amalgamation of other earlier mythology wrapped up with one person. And then the gospel accounts are kind of written to kind of, as a biography to make it look like he was a historical person and add validity to it. This came about in the 18th century. Um, it's never really gained a lot of traction. Uh, it was most notable for Gerald Macy in the 1870s, an Egyptologist who kind of put theory forward the theory that uh, Horace and Jesus had a lot of similarities. And those have now been largely dismissed, even though contemporaries still do base a lot of their arguments off his work, such as Dean Murdoch. Really, right now, there's only one really respected and credible historical scholar who does put forward the Jesus Smith, and that's Richard Carrier, who published a peer-reviewed book on the subject. But Carrier's arguments are not really taken seriously across the rest of historical academia, and it's never really gained any traction. That's not to say that the Jesus myth claims aren't true, it's just that they're not accepted by the vast majority of people, and the arguments he gives are often seen as weak and not really very supportive. So what that means is you kind of have a situation where, much like climate change, you have a vast majority of scholars in the field who all agree on a particular interpretation of the data, and then one or two from the opposing side who agree that it should be uh, interpreted in a different way. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong, it's just that the sheer volume and weight of scholarly research argues in favor of a historical Jesus. So I hope this has been enlightening. Um, I hope this has kind of helped to see that the uh, historical Jesus is kind of uh, backed by scholarship and by historical study, and I'll be providing in the description of the video a number of links to other books that you can read and see this case. I'll be linking to both Carrier's book and then to a number of other books by um, both religious and atheist historians who um, argue for historical Jesus. 
If you have your own thoughts on whether Jesus exists, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And please share this video with somebody you know that doesn't think Jesus existed.